Welcome back, Bio Monsters. Today we're going to be talking about graphing. So, so we we're go. actually going to start off today by talking about an example um, where we can use graphing to help figure out what's going on. So this example has to do with the island of Krakatau, which has a very large volcano on it. And in 1883, this island experienced a violent, a huge volcanic eruption, and the entire island was wiped out. Yeah, all life was killed. Nothing was left. So let's take a look at some data that was collected. So here's a data table. Data tables are our friends. Whenever you're giving data, given data in science, it's basically a gift because it makes it easier to understand what it is the scientists are trying to share with you. So in this particular data table, um, we're looking as far back as 1883 and we're going as far forward as 1985. So we're looking at um, roughly about 100 years worth of data. The data in particular that we're looking at, what we want to pay attention to is that each row was showing us the number of species that are present for particular birds on the island after the eruption. So it's not how many birds there are, mm -hmm. it's how many different types of species are present. So looking at the title or the very top of both columns is really important. So we have the year on the left and then we have the number of species on the right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that we're oriented and familiar with the data, let's figure out what we want so to do with it. once scientists have data, we like to look for trends, which is basically a pattern in the data, and then attempt to explain those trends. And we could look at this table for a while and try and figure out what the pattern is, but it's much easier to see patterns if we make a graph of our data. And although you can look at this data chart and you can see that over time it appears that the number of species is increasing, mm -hmm. unfortunately usually in science you're dealing with thousands of data points. Yeah. And so most scientists aren't given a little tiny um, data set like this, so it's really hard to make sense of any patterns or trends that you might see. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a smaller data trend or a smaller data set and we're going to go ahead and graph it okay. um, so that it will make more sense. Alright, okay. so first thing we need to do is go over the important parts of a graph that you need to make sure are on all the graphs that you make in this class. So the first and probably one of the most important parts is the graph title and you might want to put a star next to this because whenever you are looking at a graph this is what you want to look at first. This tells you what the graph is about. You want to look at that before you try and look at the data and before you try and answer any questions. And oftentimes on the SOL, the answer to the question is literally the, the graph title. title. So it's really important. Okay, the next part is the vertical or Y axis along the side. And again, this is going to tell you some important information about what is being measured. And one of the things that I always like to say to help me remember which one is the Y versus mm -hmm. which one is the X, I always like to say Y to the sky. So Y to the sky. So we always remember that the Y axis is going up to the sky or it's vertical. So Y to the sky. And then on the horizontal axis, we have our x-axis. And again, in this case, it's years on the x-axis, but you're want to, going to want to read your label. The last important point on a graph is something called the origin. And the origin um, basically is where the x and the y-axis meet. In this particular graph, in this case, it happens to be 0 for the y-axis and 1880 for so the x. So what's cool in science is x and y-axis actually correspond to our experimental variables, to our IV, our independent, and our DV, our dependent variable. And that's really important because, again, on the SOL, sometimes they'll show you a graph and ask you what's the IV or what's the DV, and if you know which axis is which, you can get those questions right without even reading the graph. Yeah. So the x-axis is the what? is the independent variable. It's the thing that I'm going to change in the experiment. And if we wanted to do some quick little word art, if mm -hmm. we just drew an X, so let's just draw a regular X, if we take those X's and we put little hats on the top, and we put little feet on the bottom, you'll notice that they turn into eyes. just they crossed like eyes. eyes. So where do we put those two eyes? Those two eyes are the independent variable is always found on the x-axis. The dependent variable is has to be found on the only other axis that's available and that's going to be the y. Mm -hmm. So the dependent variable, the thing that I'm measuring, is going to be on the y-axis. And there's one other picture we can draw to help us remember this. If this is a graph right here, and this is my x-axis and this is my y-axis, I can actually make my x-axis into a big i and I can make my y-axis into a big D to help me remember independent on the x-axis 
dependent on the Y. So you should definitely draw these pictures in your notes. We can also find our IV and our DV in our data table. So in our data table, the IV is usually found in the left-hand column. Um, so in this case, the IV is going to be the? It's going to be the number of years. And the dependent is going to be? The number of species. So this is just reinforcing what we just said. The dependent variable usually is found on the right-hand side mm -hmm. of the data. Okay. So now we're going to work together to actually make a graph of our data so we can interpret it. Um, so when we're graphing, it's important to know that each row in the graph is going to correspond to one point on our graph. So this first row, my x value is 1883, and my y value is 0. So if I wanted to write that as coordinates, I'm going to graph the coordinates 1883 and 0 for my first point. So I'm going to go over to 1883 on the x and up to 0, which isn't up at all, on the y, and then I'm going to draw my first point there. And you should do the same on your paper. All right, then the next thing that we need to do, so we can say that we've already done that one, we can cross it off. Mm -hmm. The next coordinates that we're looking for are 1908 and 13. Okay, so 1908 is going to probably be about here. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm going to go up to 13. So over to 1908, up to 13. So here's 10, there's 20. I'm going to keep going to about right here. Perfect. And then once we have those two uh, data points on our graph, we want to make sure that we connect the dots. Right. So now we already, we're starting to see that the data is, looks like something. Things mm -hmm. are happening over time. So our next coordinates are going to be 1920, and then the number of species will be 28. Okay, so I'm going to go over to about where 1920 would be on my x-axis, and then I'm going to go up to about 28, which is almost all the way up at 30. Maybe about right here. And these lines should be straight. So you guys are going to be using a ruler. We're doing the best that we can with what yeah. we have. Our next data point, or our next uh, two points that we're going to look at is going to be 1950 and then 34. Okay, so 1950 is going to be about here. And then I'm going to go up all the way to 34, which is almost halfway between 30 and 40. So right about there. I might have to draw on my table a little bit here. And then um, the last points that we're going to look at, 1985 and 38. Okay. So 1985 is just about halfway through here, and then 38 ooh, right up here near the top, and I'm going to just draw right across here like that. What if we had to create a graph from scratch? So we made your job easier by giving you this good graphing checklist. So here's the checklist you need to go through whenever you make a graph first. Does your graph have a title? Remember, titles are really important. That not only is that the first thing that you should look at when you're reading a graph, it's the first thing that you should be thinking about when you're making one. Right. Um, the second question you need to ask yourself is, have you placed the independent variable on the x-axis and the dependent on the y? And remember, if you don't, if, you, if you're getting confused, think about our word art. So Miss mm -hmm. Hines drew the x and the y axis and then turned them into different letters. Or you could also take the x and turn it into two i's that are crossed to remember which goes where. All right, the next thing that you need to ask yourself is have you labeled the axes correctly and specified the units of measurement? Right. So in our class, if you're not using the proper units of measurement, the answer is wrong. wrong. So you want to make sure that you have the reader understands what values or what units you're actually using um, when you're making your graph. And then finally, is your data plotted correctly and clearly? All right, so if all of those things, if you have done all of those things, your graph should be in good shape. Good. All right. So the next thing that we want to do is we just want to double check our work. So okay. we freehanded the first graph, but essentially yeah. this is what it should have looked like had we used a ruler like you guys were supposed to do. And let's just go through our good graphing checklist. So I've got my title, I have my IV on the X and my DV on the Y. I have appropriate um, numbers and units drawn on the sides of my graph. And then my data is plotted correctly and clearly. So this would be an A+. Plus. All right, now we're to our first stop and jot. All right, so now we're going to do some more graphing practice. And this time, you guys are going to be on your own. We've provided a data table. 
And this data table has two columns, just like our previous one. Right. So what do we remember about a data table and what goes where? Okay, so what I remember is that usually my IV is over towards the left and my DV is over towards the right. So what does that mean about X versus Y? Okay, so I'm going to draw one more time this picture. Here's my graph. I remember the bottom is the I, the side is the D. So I remember the IV goes on the X axis along the bottom and the DV goes on the Y axis. So when I make my graph, I'm going to put the pH of water along the bottom on the X axis and I'm going to put number of tadpoles along the side on the Y axis. So essentially those two titles on, on the top of each one of these columns becomes the title of each axis, right? All right, so here's another stop and jot. Pause the video and answer the stop and jot questions. Remember, you can't proceed until you've had your teacher. Um, look over your answers and check to make sure that they're correct. So once you've created a graph, the next step is to analyze our data so we can draw some conclusions from it. So the four vocab terms that you see on your screen right now and also in the notes in front of you, these are the four heavy hitters that you're going to see time and time again on the SOLs. Okay, so intervals are the space between the values on the x and y axis. So let's do a quick example. So if I have a graph and on my x axis I see that the numbers are going 0, 2, 4, 6, what would my interval be? Well, it would be the space in between those two points, right? So 0 to 2, 2 to 4, and 4 to 6, the distance between the two would be 2. 2. Let's do one more example. So let's say on my y-axis my numbers were going 0, 50, 100, 150. What would my interval be then? Well now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to ask myself what is the distance or how many numbers fall between those two points. Mm -hmm. So if I'm looking from 0 to 50 I know that the number is 50. 50. And when I go from 51 to 100, 50. It's still 50. And then 100 to 150, Still 50. 50. So what are my intervals on my y-axis on this particular graph? 50. Should be 50. Okay. All right. Now let's look at the word optimum. Well, optimum is just a fancy way to say the best. The best. In science class, they'll ask you, what is the optimum mm -hmm. Uh, temperature for growth of a mm -hmm. plant or the optimal pH for the number of tadpoles. So all you're asking we're asking you to do is simply look for the highest point or the highest value on the graph because that shows you that that's the, the best. best. All right, the next term that we're going to look at is the term abundant. And it's kind of similar to optimum, sometimes used slightly differently, but abundant also means lots or very common. So it's going to point you to the same place on the graph. If it asks for where is something the most abundant, you definitely want to look for the highest point on the graph. All right, and then the last thing that we're going to talk about is rate. And we know that you've talked about rate mm -hmm. in your math classes because rate means the same thing as slope. So when we're looking at a slope, we can either be looking at something that has a fast rate or a slow rate. And that's just based on the slope that you see visually on the graph. So Ms. Hines is drawing two examples. You need to draw these same examples on your paper because you're going to see them again. Okay, at this point you need to pause the video and answer your stop and jot question. Now we're going to start practicing interpreting some data. So our job is to identify the graph that matches the story. So the story is, I had just left home when I realized I had forgotten my books, so I went back to pick them up. So let's just think about this story real quick before we look at any of the graphs. Okay. So if I'm leaving home, mm -hmm. I know that I'm getting further away from okay. the house, right? So I'm getting uh -huh. farther away from the house. But then as I'm leaving the house, it strikes me that I forgot my books and okay. I need to go back and get them. So what am I now going to be doing? I'm going to get closer to the house. So we're looking for a graph that shows us a story that we're leaving the house, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. then we're going... Back, back to the house to pick them up and okay. then ultimately we'll be leaving the house again to go right. on our way to school okay so we're then we'll go farther away again yeah so we're looking for going away from the house mm -hmm. coming back to the house going back 
away from the house. Okay. So we have four options and let's pay attention to our axes because that's usually what trips people up. So let's go ahead and identify our Y axis and our X axis. Remember Y goes to the sky. So we know that the other one's going to be our X. So we're going to label our Y's here so that we don't get confused. And if you also look, you'll notice that on these graphs, they put the title of the axes in a weird place, but you need to be comfortable with that because sometimes there are variances in the way that graphs look. So my Y Y axis is going to be my distance from home. Okay, and my x axis is time. Is time. So remember, we're starting out, we're starting at home. Okay. So at home, we're going to be at time zero, we're going to be at the origin. And the right. origin is where? The origin is right here where the x and y axis meets. Okay. And so according to my story, let's start with the beginning. I just left home. Okay. So I need to find a graph where I'm moving away from the house. Okay. Do all of the graphs show that? It does look like all of the graphs, you start moving away from the origin further so, up. So, so far, we don't have any information that's really going to help us. So let's no. look at the second part of the word problem. So because I forgot my books, I'm going to stop what I'm doing, mm -hmm. and I'm going to return and go back home. So okay. if I'm returning back home, am I moving further away from um, the X? I am moving closer to the X, which is where I started. I need to move back down towards my home. So this graph, it looks like you're moving further and further away. So this one's going to be out. We can get rid of it. Okay, let's take a look at this graph. In this graph, you're moving further away. And then you kind of stay the same for a while, but you didn't really go back home. You just stayed in the same place. So that doesn't work because we know we need to have out. to go back and get our books. And this graph also, you're, you're moving further and further away. That doesn't show us anything. And then finally, when we look at option four, notice that we're leaving the house. We leave. We left the house. And then I stop because uh -huh. I remember I forgot my books and I'm going to turn around. And when I turn around, I'm going to head back towards the house. So our distance from home is going to decrease mm -hmm. and ultimately be zero. And then when I'm home, we have all of that time that's actually on the x-axis. And then finally, I have to leave because I need to go to school. So this graph shows us the same story that the word problem just did. So the correct answer should be four. So this story says, I started out calmly, but I sped up when I realized I was going to be late. So starting out calmly, that sounds like it's dealing with the with rate, which right. we just talked about. Right, we need to think about rate. So calmly is going to be a slow rate. And remember, rate corresponds to slope. slope. And if it's a slow rate, is the slope going to be shallow or is it going to be steep? The slope should be shallower, so okay. not as steep. All right. But then it says, I speed up. When, when I realized that I was going to be late. So I sped up pretty quickly. So my rate is now going to be fast. Mm -hmm. So we're still talking about a slope. Yeah. But what kind of slope are we going to see? We're going to see a very steep slope. Okay. So let's see what we can do to match up this story with the graphs that we have. So um, these are the same exact graphs that okay. we had before. So we can so, probably take out number four because we, we already, know we already used yeah. it and it doesn't make any sense. So we're looking for a graph where we start out slow. Okay. We have a shallow rate. So, or a uh, shallow slope. So let's go ahead and look at all three of these options. I'm going to start with option number three. Option number three has this interesting curve to it. Yeah. So we are leaving the house. Uh-huh. But does it look like we're getting faster over time? No, it actually looks like we're going from steep to shallow instead of from shallow to steep. It looks like we're getting slower so this over is time. The, this is the opposite of the yeah. story that actually yeah, happened. That so off. we can get rid of it. So now we have a 50-50 shot of getting mm -hmm. this right. So if we look at option two, the slope at the very beginning of that graph shows me that I'm leaving the house, uh -huh. but I'm leaving the house how? I'm leaving the house pretty quickly. It's pretty it's pretty steep. Okay, but after that, it stops. Yeah, it's horizontal. A horizontal slope is no rate. There's no movement. All right, so I'm staying in the same spot for a period of time, and then all of a sudden, what happens again? Then I speed up again, and I have a pretty steep slope again. So that doesn't really correspond to what we've been talking about. So if we look at graph number one, the slope of that graph shows us the rate is pretty slow pretty slow but then I check my watch and I realize mm -hmm. you're running late and so the slope starts to increase increase so it looks like the correct answer should be number one number one things went fine until I had a 
flat tire. So we know we already used four and we used one. Let's go ahead and just get rid of them. Now, if things are going fine, it means that I'm leaving the house. So I have uh -huh. left the house. So both of these ones fit with that. We're leaving the house. Okay. But then I had a flat tire. Are you supposed to drive on a flat tire? No. So I'm pulled over on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. So my rate should be zero. Zero. I'm not going anywhere. Right. So that right there tells us what the correct graph should be. There's only one graph that's showing that I've left the house, but then I'm stuck at a mm -hmm. location in between the house and the distance where, or in the final location where I'm trying to go. And what graph is that? That is going to be graph number two. Number two. But what must have happened right here? So it looks like I'm starting to move further away from my house again. Yeah. So what does that tell me happened? Probably fix the tire so we can actually add on to the story using our graph. 